The buffers are a fairly simple turning exercise. There are a few challenges and we'll cover those off as we go through this video. Don's design is quite simple. On a kickoff by cutting off a lump of bright mild steel to use for the buffer bases. This is actually big enough for two end to end. As with all things turn in, the first thing I need to do is throw this in the chuck and face off one end. This chuck that came with the lathe is pretty poor. I think the run out is around about 0.6, 0.7mm. But as long as I don't move the part once I start working on the diameters, that shouldn't be a problem for me. And for subsequent operations, I'll be using my collet chuck, which of course runs much truer. After facing off, I centre drill and then use a series of drills to open up the bore to 15mm. The bottom or the far end of this bore needs to be flat, which of course is not possible with normal twist drills. To get around that problem I've taken an old drill and ground the point off. I'll run this down now which will give me a flat bottom for most of the bore or certainly the outer half of the diameter. To finish off the bore I use a boring bar. This one's got a nice sharp point on it to enable me to get a tight corner in the bottom. As we can see the bar is quite thin which means it's going to flex so I can only take very small cuts and in fact I cut both on the feed in and on the feed out and for the final cut I run it up and down twice. Although I am checking the diameter with my vernier after each pass my final test is to use this go no go gauge which is a bit of silver steel at 16mm diameter. And I've got a really nice snug fit here now in fact, as I pull it out, it forms a bit of a vacuum. Next, I need to turn down the external diameter. I'm not looking for super accuracy on this diameter, so I'm happy to use the verniers. Getting a decent finish with mild steel on this lathe is a particular challenge. I'm probably not helped by the cheap tip tool I'm using. However, it's nothing I can't clean up with a bit of emery. After repeating all of those operations on the other end of the piece of stock, I cut it in two and then swap out the three jaw for my collet jerk, which will give me the concentricity I need going forwards. At this end, it's a simple case of turning a shoulder that will need to be threaded half by 32, but also to turn the outside diameter and the depth of the flange. Because I wanted to get a really tight corner on this shoulder, I use this thread turning tool because it's got a nice point on it. On the final cut I turned it to diameter and also cleaned up the face of the flange. There's a bit of a challenge on the design here. The thread needs to be cut really tight up against the flange to enable the buffer base to screw properly into the buffer beam. However the die I have, which is just a cheap carbon steel item, is tapered at both ends so I could not thread the full depth of that shoulder. I've ordered a new die, which hopefully will overcome that particular issue. If not, I may need to tweak the design accordingly. For the buffer heads, I use some 35mm bright mild steel. As I did with the bases, I cut a lump big enough for two, head to head in this case. So I rough cut down to the approximate dimensions for the main body. I then swap the stock around and do the same on the other end. With both ends rough cut, I swap out the three jaw again for my collar chuck. I also swap out my fixed tool post for the compound slide. The reason for this is Don's design for the back of the buffer heads has a 10 degree angle. And therefore to cut that angle I'm going to need the compound slide set quite a long way around. Well, obviously at 10 degrees. And what you can see me doing here is using a dial gauge to set the compound. I then crack on and put the finishing cuts onto the back of the buffer head. And of course I keep this setup in place for all the remaining buffers. Before dropping the workpiece out and cutting it into the two separate buffers, I drill and tap a 5BA hole for the buffer retaining bolt. For the face of the buffer, Don's design calls out an unspecified radius. I wasn't quite sure how I was going to go about doing this. After a bit of a trawl around on YouTube, I found an excellent video by a chap called Alan Turner. I've got a link to the video here at the bottom of the screen, but I've also put it in the description down below. 
It's a very quick and easy method for putting a large radius on the face of your workpiece. I'm not even going to try and steal this thunder and explain how it works. Instead I will just recommend that you go and watch his video. It took me a few attempts to get it right, so different length rods to get the right radius, but in the end I was very pleased with the results, especially given the lack of setup involved. I then use a file to round off the outer diameter, and finish by giving it a bit of a polish with some memory. I will need to revisit the shoulders on the back of those buffer bases when I get my new half by 32 TPI die. I would also need to sort some springs out whether I make some or buy some I've yet to decide. But those two points aside, I'm going to wrap this video up here and as always, say thanks for watching.